Welcome to the Freedom Founder Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Duggar. Now, did you know that the failure uh, for new gym startups is actually pretty high, with some estimates suggesting that up to 80% of new gyms close within the first five years of operations? Now, my guest today, Dustin, is a sales expert that helps businesses to harvest more sales from their leads using his fortune follow-up system. He has a sales system that doesn't make a person feel like a slimy salesperson and shows you how, come, how to come from a place of serving. He's been an entrepreneur for 15 years, got his start in a little bit of a different career path, but it's all related. And so I'm going to let him talk a little bit about that as we get into the conversation. You'll also find out why the title involved elbow drops. All right. So Dustin, yes. welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Zach. I'm excited to be here and I want to add as much value to your audience as possible. So let's do this, man. Let's dive in. Awesome. Now, first, I want to clarify on the front end, the diving elbow drop. Is yes. that was that your signature move? It was not. I had a pretty mean <laughs> leg drop though and a drop kick. Okay. So, uh, those were I was proud of. Um, but yes, it, it, it's hard to make those look good, man. All right. Uh, they, they, it, Easy. Well, for those that do not know why we're talking about wrestling, enlighten us a little bit about that part of your journey. Yeah, so that that's my favorite question to answer when people go around and they say, what's a fun fact about you? I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait to get to me because uh, my fun fact is I was actually a professional wrestler for 10 years. And I'm talking elbow drops, baby oil, spandex, Hulk Hogan style wrestling not college you know like yeah. competitive wrestling right and um it, it all started back in high school man i was overweight and kind of had no confidence mm -hmm. and a friend invited me to go to the gym and i lost 60 pounds of body fat over a course of six wow. months right and, uh you know i was watching professional wrestling yep. and it was awesome because i was starting to look like one and then it's funny uh this same friend also was wanting to go to the gym because he had aspirations to one day be a pro wrestler. Wow, okay. And so uh, I joined him, went to pro wrestling school and uh, went through that whole life experience for 10 years. It was awesome. A lot of life experiences and many that translate to business for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Now that's not a story that most people can contribute when asked to tell a fun fact about themselves. <laughs> so I can see why uh, that might be one that's first on your mind. For, yeah. for me, it's that I can speak German, <laughs> not quite the there same. <laughs> well, so mm -hmm. and during that time, what are some of the skills that you learned that you feel like really do relate to business as you became and began your entrepreneurial journey? What are some of those things that even during that time as a pro wrestler that you gained? Yep. So I would say the first one that totally can apply to any business is you got to be unique. Okay. If you ask any random casual fan, what is the most popular pro wrestler you know? Yep. Most of the time, they have very outrageous characters. They're going to say <laughs> Undertaker or Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's that, you know, Texas guy that, you know, flips off people and drinks beer. Yep. Uh, the Rock, John Cena, they all have these huge larger than life characters. Okay. But nobody remembers the guy that just kind of had like some red trunks and he had a really boring <laughs> name and he had no character. Right. Yeah. And so right. there, there's a dime a dozen of those in pro wrestling and they never make it to the main event. Yep. And it's because they're bland or boring. They have no character. So one of the first things I learned that applies to business is what makes your business unique. Yep. And a lot of business owners will give me a really generic answer. They'll say our culture, uh, our customer service, uh, we care more. Yeah. We have more attention to detail. That's that's the red trunks and the guy that's just <laughs> called you know, Smith. Yep. You, you got to really have something unique. So that that's one of the big ones that I learned. If you want to really stand out, you got to be unique for sure. Okay. All right. So standing out and being unique is a, is a key factor. I mean, there's in the gym world as that that became part of your journey. Um, how did you stand out and how did you establish yourself as a unique place and even to preempt that um as i jumped the gun a little bit just also explain where you went from being in pro wrestling to in the entrepreneurial space love it 
Yeah. So basically, I, I always had this deadline on yep. myself that I have to make it by the age of 28. Otherwise, I'm going to pull the plug and walk away okay. because pro wrestling, like a lot of sports, is a young man's game. If sure. you don't get there at a certain age, it's probably a slimmer chance you're going to make it. So that was a deadline I gave myself. And what I did to pay the bills because I fell so much in love with fitness was I was a trainer Monday through Friday. Okay. And then I would put on my cape and be Batman and go be a crazy pro wrestler the weekend. Yep. And so um, that was my main gig. And so it was always in my mind, this is my backup plan. If for whatever reason I don't make it, I'm going to go all in on fitness. Yep. And it's almost like a higher power was like trying to tell me, but I wasn't listening because I was, I, I'm no stranger to like fighting resistance and things are going to be hard, but it felt like crazy extra hard in pro wrestling. I could not get bookings. I couldn't sure. get ahead. I couldn't get noticed. And so the, the, the day came, I, I turned 28, I decided to go and walk away from my pro wrestling career, go all in on fitness. And Zach, what proceeded to happen is I opened my first yep. gym and opened six gyms in the course of six years. Wow. And it was like the floodgates, like again, right. the higher power was like, this is what you were meant to do. Yeah. Now, now do you get it? Done? And I'm like, oh, why didn't I do this sooner? Right. And so again, knowing I needed to stand out that what, what, what caused me to be able to do that? Most people cannot open that many brick and mortars in that right. amount of time. But what drew people to our business by far was the things we did to be unique. So to okay. kind of answer that yep. question is I, I learned two other lessons in wrestling that I brought over to business. Yep. So number one, they, tea, or they tell a story in every match. There's usually a good guy and a bad guy. And the bad guy does something dastardly and mean and cheats. And yep. the good guy needs redemption. And so you're watching this play out in front of you. And so I knew that there's a lot of just like finger waving and fitness. People are like, you should really eat your protein. You should really go to the gym. You should really right. get more sleep. And people don't receive that so well. Right. So what I said is, you know what? I am going to teach and I'm going to educate my clients, but I'm going to do it through the, what I know very naturally from wrestling. And that's storytelling. Yep. So one of the uniques that people would often remark and bring up around us is that at the end of the session, instead of standing there just being boring and stretching, I would actually tell a story that would educate my clients on something, okay. but not through science and data and facts through a story. Yeah. And so I would just tell the story of my clients and uh, another client that got success. And I would say, let me put this client on a pedestal. Let me tell their story. Let me tell my story about how I lost 60 pounds of fat. Yeah. Let me tell you guys a story I read in a book or I saw in a movie and I would really get people inspired yeah. to the point where they would even say, I remember your stories, Dustin. I go home and I repeat them to my husband because they're so good. Yeah. And they're like, I show up not for the workouts. They're like, I actually look forward to the stories the most of the year. Right. And I know that was one of the things that really helped us to stand out from the market. The other thing that, you know, anybody can apply to any business sector is that we made it a very, very important thing to us to remember every client by their first name. Yeah. When you walk in, it would be, hey, Zach, how's your day going, yep. Zach? Not, hey, man, hey, dude, how's it going, bro? Yep. You know, again, in fitness, things can be too loose almost. Like the, the, the dress attire is yeah. casual. The greetings casual. The place can get messy. Yep. I decided I wanted to bring a premium experience to fitness. And the place is clean. The coaches are wearing nice clean uniform we address people by their first yep. name and people said immediately i've never been to a gym where they remember my first name and i'm even more impressed that there's another 30 people in here and you're rattling off everybody's name yeah. and, right. and so these are all things that i'm pointing out that can apply to any business because people think fitness is about the quality of the workout yeah. and the equipment and how big the space is and the amenities when the two things people remarked us on was remembering their first name and telling good stories. Yeah. Nothing to do with us. Right. So I think that's what really made us stand out, Zach, and why people stayed with us and we opened so many so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Establishing that personal connection is all often critical and valuable to an individual. They want to come back to that place where they feel a sense of belonging and that somebody does care. But also those stories that you're telling, you're 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 giving them something to then kind of ruminate about. And like you said, they actually went home and they would tell their spouse or significant other, their friends about some of those different stories that you were sharing. So it became also personal, not just in their own experience about the diet and the exercise program for themselves and what not to do, but also for their own ability to see how they could walk out a story and see their story in somebody else's life as well. So 
Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. I can see where that sets set you apart and we're able to establish some kind of momentum to kind of pick up the pace. Now, per, personal trainers don't always decide to open up a gym. What gave you that mindset? Like, I'm going to open up a gym. You know, it's funny. Again, shameless plug. You guys sure. don't know, I recently dropped the book, Reinforce Your Gym. Yes. The first story in the book is how I tapped into my entrepreneurial energy. Okay. And it actually came from a scary story in Mexico. Yep. So I actually was asked to go on a two week Mexico tour yep. and be in the main event every night and be the villain, which is easy to do. If you're a white guy in Mexico, you come out with an American flag and say Mexico sucks. Sure. They threw batteries at me. They threw ca uh, cans of piss, like oh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just as part of the thing, yep. you know, yep. you're getting, you're getting into it. And so, um, what happened is halfway through the tour, the, the promoter actually came to the wrestlers and said, I'm out of money. I, I okay. didn't sell as many tickets as I thought, and I can't pay you. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. Right. And all the wrestlers immediately said, we were not putting on the show. The tour is over. We're all going home. But I kind of did a terrible thing, Zach. I checked all the boxes you check to go and die in Mexico. Okay. So number one, I was still living with my mom, and I did not tell her I was going to Mexico because yep. I knew she'd be bad. So nobody knew I was going there. Yep. I left with $200 in my pocket. And at this time it was flip phones and they didn't work internationally. Okay. So I had no way to get a hold of anybody. I'm out of money and nobody knows I'm there. Yep. And so um, now the promoter says he can't pay me money and I, got, I have no return flight. Wow. And so yeah. essentially we, the fans are angry, which they should, they should be. They come out, they're banging on the bus. They yep. want to kill us. The bus runs. We, we get home or we get to a safe town and then another wrestler's nice and fronts me the money so I could fly home okay. and get back home to America. Yep. So that's kind of how that ended. But it was on that flight home. This is where I tapped into my entrepreneurial energy. Yeah. I said, man, looking back at this experience, all these terrible things all tied to money. Yep. The promoter ran out of money. I was stuck in another country without money. The, ang the angry fans, we took their money and they were upset and they wanted to kill us. Yep. And I said, I do not want to be in this place ever again because of this thing called money. And so I said to myself, when I go home, I was like training people in their homes and I had a job as a fitness director. I said, I'm going to start a business because yep. I want to take control over my money situation. And I don't want someone else to have that power over me because that's pretty much what I, I had was when I went to Mexico, I was waiting for the promoter to pay me. I needed his right. money. I, I didn't have any control. Yeah. And I just said, I want to feel like I have a little bit more control over my financial future. Yeah. And so that's where I started thinking and, you know, kind of hatching the plan of I'm going to open my own gym and I'm not going to have a job and depend on someone else to pay me yeah. to get ahead of line. Yeah. I mean, creating that freedom. That's what this show is all about is finding ways that we've created our own freedom through establishing business opportunities that we can grow and develop over time. Now, you brought up your book, Reinforce Your Gym. Uh, is a great way to introduce that topic. Now, that book, though, is written for other gym owners, is my understanding. And some of the work that yes. you and your team do to help other gym owners and being able to essentially reinforce their gym and establish a stronger foundation. So talk a little bit about yeah. that, about the, uh, the systems that you've put into place and that you're helping to teach and support others with to be able to allow them to establish that reinforcement in their gym. Yeah. And I, I absolutely wrote it for gym owners because that's my space. Yep. That's my experience with what I know. But I've had multiple people now tell me, hey, I bought it and I own a car wash okay. and I own a long term yeah. business and I have an online course and I pulled golden nuggets out of it. And I was just like, oh, OK, I guess there are some things that could apply to all business sectors. Right. So even I have been challenged about how the application can work. Yeah. And there's three main sections. So the first section is building your lead machine. And I give yeah. actual practical marketing tips because the first problem everyone wants relief from is just to know you have a nonstop flow of leads. Yeah. And I give an exhaustive list of paid and organic strategies you can deploy to get that to happen. Yeah. The second is sales multipliers. So you already have sales happening in your business but there's little hidden things you can do to multiply their effectiveness. Okay. And so that's the second section with, you know, again, some supporting chapters and lessons. And then the third is the, is the one that I failed at the most and had to learn to get better at over time, Zach. And yeah. I'm even still learning about it. And that's leadership. 
And so, you know, I what, what we didn't touch on with those six gyms is that where the carpet kind of got swept from underneath me is actually I scaled too quickly. Okay. I didn't have the leadership in place. Yep. I didn't have the culture down to a like an almost an SOP where I'm telling people this is how we live our culture. I just lived it and expected everybody to copy me. Sure. And that's not how it works right. in business. And I ended up having to close two and then I sell one. Yep. And you know, now I operate those, those three that still remain, yep. but that was a humbling experience. And so that's kind of what I teach in that leadership. The final section is like how I've learned to be a better leader. Cause that was something I didn't know I would need stepping into a business. I thought it's very much task driven. Like, Hey, I'm hiring you. Here's some money. Do these tasks done deal. Yeah. But like these days that doesn't work. You have to have culture and core values you stand by and leadership leaders in place that are, that your your extension of you yeah. that will run the ship as well as you will yep. sometimes even better so so those are the three sections in the book and i do think again to take my 20 years in business and put it into a book and hand it to somebody and they get it all for 15 dollars is a pretty yeah. fair exchange oh, absolutely <laughs> and i can see definitely where that applies to a lot of businesses a lot of businesses really do need to figure out a way to establish leads how to get the sales, how to maintain sales, and then leadership, as you mentioned, critical aspect of business is to make sure that you have that awareness and how that relates to your, your ability to scale, to scale properly and effectively, mm -hmm. and to maintain consistency um, because you can't be everywhere all at once all at the same time. It just doesn't work like that. So if you're the only person that's kind of the linchpin in your organization, um, you're going to have some challenges to being able to effectively scale. So I, I think what you've described and what people have said, absolutely, this book would apply to other businesses as well. And yeah. everybody needs a little fitness in their lives. So I imagine there's a few stories along the way that they can hear oh, yeah. and read because that's your style as well. So I think that would be a great um, additional tool in the toolbox on the shelf or in the front of their face is really even better than just leaving yeah. it on the shelf. So. Oh, beyond beyond that, are you guys also working with gym owners too, if, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, okay. yes. So I did start a, because I went from B to C, which is like yep. helping people lose fat, which we still do to this day. Yep. But I went B to B, which is I need to help other gym owners because I can only open so many gyms um, yep. and, and my resources are limited at the end of the day. Right. And so how do I go? bigger faster and it's to tap in what i do well into all the gyms that exist already yes. because for the listeners that don't know this maybe they're not tapped into the latest health stats like i am mm -hmm. um we on track uh, the us is on track to be 50 percent obese by the year 2030 wow. which is not far away that's right. scary and the yeah. global population is right behind by five years by 2035 the global population will be 50 wow. percent obese so it's like we are making tracks to make that 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 movie that disney movie like come true <laughs> where everybody's obese uh what's the one where he's a robot uh, i'm having Wall a brain wally right now. Oh, yeah. there you go like mm -hmm. wally is gonna be here guys right. by 2030 that is scary right because that was like playing around like it's gonna be hundreds of years right. no it's seven years away oh my god and so what what i'm really convicted is to help win the war against obesity yeah and we spend a lot of time and energy as a country looking at all the problems around the world, but we are the most obese country in the world. And yeah. that hurts our economy, help hurts our relationships. People are dying way sooner than they should. My family's a victim of that. My aunt, I had two aunts die under the age of 50 yeah. because of lifestyle choices, right. because of literally what they ate, one cancer, one stroke. And so I just want to fight that war with all my heart. And so what we do at gym reinforcements is we do all the lead follow-up for the gym owner. Okay. So we'll text, we'll call, we'll email, we'll social media DM. Yep. And it's all to get that person to take that first step into the gym. That's the big like crux that leads to literally lifestyle change and generational yep. health. And you know, if mom gets healthy, we look at her as the Trojan horse into the household. Yep. She gets healthy just by ripple effect. Everybody else tends to get healthy because they all have to follow her lead. Yeah. She goes grocery shopping for the most part. She cooks. She, you know, allows what is allowed in the cupboards and, and fridge. And so if she starts saying, huh, I didn't know this had that. Oh, I don't like my kids having that. 
and she starts filtering, yep. kids start getting healthier. She's like, I, hey, I feel better when I move. So guess what, kids? We're not going to watch mm -hmm. Netflix. We're going to go for a walk. Yep. And so she gets the family out of the house. And then the husband starts losing that beer belly. And like everybody gets healthy because mom gets healthy. Yeah. And so that's why she's our target market who we help most gyms of America and boot camps and personal training centers. That's like 80% of their clients. But I'm okay by that because I know the ripple effect right. that will happen. So yeah. that that's how the gym reinforcements is there to help gym owners. Is like, let's just let help you get more moms into your business so that you can cre help create that ripple effect in all the families of America. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I love that. And gym reinforcements would absolutely crush that statistic on the front end that I talked about. And so many gyms that fail because they don't have those systems in place and they don't have the effective leadership, but the lead generation, the sales the leadership. So absolutely critical to what you're doing to not only help uh, kind of expand what you're doing in operation, but really just help with that mission to defeat obesity over time. I yeah. would definitely not like to see those statistics come true, but I can see where that direction is coming from. Now, yeah. a couple of questions I like to ask my guests. When you are approached specifically to share like, okay, I'm a new entrepreneur. What, what would be a one tip? that you could give me that really helped me in getting started, something you've learned along the way. What's, what's one of those big tips that you give to people? Mentorship is okay. invaluable. Yep. That if you want to speed up your success, you can go the long painful route, which is you go through all the trials and <laughs> yeah. tribulations yourself. Right. And you are yes. suffering with time and stress and just frustration, self-doubt. It makes you start questioning, do I suck? Am I the worst business <laughs> owner to exist? Yep. And then you start talking to a mentor and you're like, they chuckle because they've been through everything you have and they can literally point out all the potholes. Don't do that. Don't trip over that. Yeah. Watch out for that. And you could get to your destination a lot quicker. Yeah. So like, don't skimp on that. I know that it's an extra cost because like, man, I got to pay the staff and I pay for marketing. And now you're telling me I got to go hire this mm -hmm. mentor. It will be worth it if this is the big if you take action. Yes. I've been in too many rooms where I see people taking notes six months later their business is exactly the same yep. because they took no action yep so like don't don't buy this book highlight it up and then put it on the shelf and you know read and repeat yep. like take action but also again back to the lesson it's hire a mentor yep. faster yep all the knowledge in the world won't make a difference if you do not take action so a mentor can help increase that accountability to support you taking action as well and the second question yep. If you were to be handed a million dollars today to invest in yourself or in the business or another endeavor you're pursuing, what would you do with that? I would eat my own words and my own advice yep. and that would be go hire another mentor okay. that maybe it's out of my resources to hire right now, sure. but with a million dollars, I absolutely could. Yeah. Um, and so I would definitely do that because I know if I put 100% of that into self-education and mentorship, yeah. I would see that return really quick. Absolutely. So, um, you know, again, I think everybody should minimum be putting 10% of their income into self-education, self-development, a course, a mentor, you know, a mastermind, something that helps you to speed up along. And uh, you'll notice that the more you increase that number, the faster your income number goes up. So then you start getting addicted to like, yeah. man, if you took <laughs> me that million dollars and I put it in, holy cow, what right. would I get if... I got you know invested. So yes, that's exactly what I would do with that. Yeah, I think that's great. And it ties in exactly with what your recommendation was for a top tip for new entrepreneurs or people that are just on their journey but need some support along the way. So um now and, you know well, most people yeah. don't realize that they when, once they get those self skills, you own them for life. Yeah. So that could be literally the, like my last million dollars and the, and you're telling me I'm gonna go right. put on self education. Yes, because you make Donald Trump broke, you make Elon Musk mm -hmm. broke, you take all their money, they will know how to rebuild it because yep. they've been mentored and they saved up here. Yes. So that's again why it's, it's so invaluable. You, yes. you don't lose it ever. Right, no, I, I think that there are a lot of examples, just like you said, there are a lot of people that are successful today that have bankruptcy stories along the way or failure stories yeah. along the way. So. Uh, without that education, that self-development and application of that knowledge, those individuals wouldn't be what they are today. So without investing in those that time and resources, 
I mean, you won't be able to accomplish what you can unless you go through a lot of failure, a lot of struggle and a lot more time. So absolutely. absolutely. All right. Now, if anybody wants to reach out to you to find out more about what you're doing, what's the best way for someone to connect with you? Yeah, I'm most active on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. So just search my name, Dustin Bogle there. Okay. If you're a gym owner that wants community and you want to figure out how to grow your business simply, um, then I have a fit a group for gym owners. Okay. Just search gym reinforcements. And then um, the final thing would be, you know, hey, go grab a copy of this uh, bestseller on Amazon, which I'm proud of. Okay. Uh, reinforce your gym. Yeah. And so hardcover, paperback, Kindle, it's all there. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So if you're out there and you're not making a whole lot of money right now, I'm sure that's going to cost a lot less than the 10% that Dustin mentioned to buy that book. So do connect with him on Facebook. And if you're a gym owner and you want to sense a community, look up gym reinforcements. There's a community there for you as well. So Dustin, thank you very much for your time today. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate all you're doing to help entrepreneurs and nothing but best of luck to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk again soon.